bang you just heard was a meteorite just hitting the earth. This impact occurred at Chicxulub in Mexico around the end of the Cretaceous period. A great cloud of dust encircled the globe, it blackened out the sun, and this ended up causing the KT mass extinction event to occur. This extinction spelled the end for the dinosaurs and the pterosaurs on land, and also the ammonites in the sea. It is a common misconception that the mammals evolved after the KT extinction. But let's go back and take a look to what happened before the KT event occurred. During the Permian, synapsids, a type of reptile, dominated the planet. The mammal crown groups evolved from synapsids. Therapsids were the first of this group that resemble mammals and are characterized by many of the key mammalian traits. The first true mammals evolved from the late Jurassic to early Jurassic periods. Mammals the size of a small rodent were most common and grew no larger than a dog-sized animal. Structural differences in the skeleton of these early branches of mammalia forms are used to distinguish them from primitive synapsids and other reptiles. Skeletal differences such as the limbs positioned beneath the body instead of splayed in other reptiles, ribs confined to the thorax, a jaw consisting of a single bone and the development of three inner ear bones. The development of heterodont teeth is unique to mammals and their precursors. Negzustrodon believed to be the earliest true mammal fossil lived during the late Jurassic. It featured all of the previously mentioned mammalian traits. Its teeth consisted of canines, incisors, premolars and molars for better mechanical digestion. The mammal was a primitive egg-laying form. Alphodon, a Cretaceous marsupial, is distinguished by fossil dental evidence showing three premolars and four molars not seen in other clades of mammals. During the Mesozoic era, many different clades of mammals evolved with the four surviving the KT mass extinction. Three are extinct today, these are the monotremes, the marsupials and the placentals. Monotremes are considered the most primitive group of living mammals. Only five species still exist. They are only found in Australasia. These include the platypus and the echidnas. Monotremes are distinguished by a unique mode of reproduction, laying eggs and feeding their young on milk secreted through mammary glands and suck from their fur. The platypus, along with being an egg-laying mammal, is duck-billed and has a beaver-like tail and otter feet that assist it when swimming. The echidnas' diet consists of ants and termites but they are not closely related to the true anteaters of the Americas. The monotrins inhabit Western Australia and Papua New Guinea. There are possible vestiges from pre-KT times and survive due to the reluctance of marsupials to become aquatic. The marsupials differ from the monotremes in that their young are born tiny and helpless. They have claws that help them crawl into the maternal pouch. In this pouch, the young feed on milk and grow until they are able to fend for themselves outside the mother's pouch. The marsupials inhabit Australia, North America and South America. Marsupials, when met with placentals, are often outcompeted for resources. In modern times, the introduction of various placentals to Australia has led to the extinction of many marsupials. When Panama was connected to South America, many placentals migrated, which led to the extinction of many marsupial species. The oldest fossils of marsupials come from the mid-Cretaceous of North America. The group radiated successfully in South America during the tertiary, and includes several lines of insectivores, herbivores and carnivores, many of which were remarkably like unrelated placental mammals elsewhere. The marsupials reached Australia via the Antarctic landmass, which at the time connected both South America and Australia. Once there, marsupials diversified even more. After the extinction, there was a delay in the diversification of mammals. Eventually, though, mammals started to prosper and radiate across the globe during the Paleocene and Eocene periods. Placental mammals produce young that are retained in the mother's womb much longer than is the case in marsupials, and they are also nourished by the blood passed through the placenta. The placentals are the most successful of the three mammal groups still extant. They are very diverse in terms of the habitats that they can occupy. They also include marine species that do not require a connection to land and are also the only mammals that are able to occupy the polar habitats. When placentals are introduced to regions inhabited by marsupials, they often outcompete the native fauna. Placentals have occupied the northern hemisphere for most of their history. Terrestrial mammal forms began to invade the marine environment during the early Eocene. Multiple orders of mammals now inhabit the ocean. Indohylus, the earliest whale fossil, is a fully terrestrial ancestral form. It is a thick bony wall surrounding the air which is only seen in the modern whale group. Indohylus and all whales evolved from the Arthrodactylids. The first whales evolved in the Indian subcontinent and began their marine evolution in the Tethys Sea. 
Seals and walruses formed the clay pinnipedia and they evolved from the order Carnivora. They evolved similar features as whales for marine life, such as vertical undulation of the tail for locomotion. Elephants are the only living representative of proboscidans, a formerly diverse mammalian order whose history began in the Paleocene. Features such as tusks and long muscular trunks that are found in the modern forms were less developed in the early forms. The most primitive rel relative is the Erythium azuzorum. It was the size of a large rabbit and had two lower front teeth that jutted out from its lower jaw. These are thought to be some kind of precursor to tusks found in modern elephants. The proboscidans have produced some of the largest land mammals ever throughout their history. Bats are mammals of the order Chiroptera, whose forelimbs form webbed wings that allow for the sustained flight, making them the only mammals capable of this. They are the second largest order of mammals after rodents. At Grumesal in Germany, bats are the most common fossil found. The suggested reason for this is that they were overcome by gases emanating from the Mesa Lake and drowned. The fossils are dated from the Eocene. Paleocene landscapes contain very few land plant eaters. Hooped herbivores arose in the early Eocene, where two main groups radiated. The odd toad undulates such as horses and rhinos, and even toad undulates such as cattle and deer. The oldest even toad undulates were small rabbit sized animals that fed on leaves. Later forms raided into two main groups the Bunodontia, comprising of pigs and hippos, and Selenodontia, comprising of camels and antelopes. So, the Eocene was the time in the mammal history where we see a great radiation mammals occupying every ecological niche available. Land, sea, air, trees and burrows were all areas that mammals have been able to exploit. There was more to the story also. As we move into the Oligocene and later time periods, we see mammals grow in size and the emergence of us. Humans. 